In this video I'm going to go through the steps required to initially prepare and assess a high C data set before going on to do the statistical analysis to find significant interactions. The data set I have here is one that's come out of a high C pipeline from the Hiccup program which does the mapping for high C data sets and also produces a whole lot of quality control information and it's a good idea to have spent some time looking through the hiccup output to decide whether your library is any good before you move on to doing the analysis in Seekmonk. The other uh, thing that I've imported into this project is an annotation track containing the position of all the Hindi 3 fragments in the genome this library was constructed based on Hindi 3 fragments, as all high C libraries are around some restriction enzyme. And the first thing I want to check is that the reads that I've got sit in the right place relative to the restriction fragments. If I zoom in a bit, you should be able to see that the reads that I get should exist on the ends of Hindi 3 fragments, and that the end that they're on should reflect the direction of the reads that I see. So reads should always be pointing towards a Hindi 3 cut site and should never be too far away from that site. I can see this on an individual basis here but what I would like to do is to look at this in a more systematic way. So what I'm going to do initially is to put some probes over every Hindi 3 fragment. So I can do this by defining my probes using the feature probe generator and making probes over every Hindi 3 fragment. I'm not going to quantitate this because that's not required for this, so I'm just going to give these a fixed value. And then just to speed things up, I'm going to run a position filter to just take out all of the probes that are on chromosome 1, so this runs in a quick little uh, faster time. The way that I can assess whether the reads are in the right place genome-wide, therefore, is to do a trend plot. So if I do a probe trend plot, what I should see is that I see enrichment of reads at both ends, but very few reads in the middle. And that's precisely what I see. Further than this, I should be able to construct probe trend plots using just forward or reverse reads. And I should see that I only see one end of this distribution. So all my forward ones sit at the end of the fragments. and all my reverse ones sit at the front. So very quickly I've determined that the reads that have been mapped all look like they sit in the right place. Now I want to go on to start preparing the probes that I actually want to use for my final analysis. The depth of coverage that I have in this library is relatively low, so I don't have enough information in a single Hindi 3 fragment to be able to make a good assessment of the significance of interactions. So what I'm going to do for this analysis is to concatenate together multiple Hindi 3 fragments to get the required level of coverage so that I stand a good chance of achieving significance. I can do this by constructing the probes from my existing probe set and concatenating them together. So to do this I go into my define probes options and now I'm going to merge consecutive probes and I'm going to put a hundred probes together, so a hundred consecutive Hindi 3 fragments spaced by 50 Hindi 3 fragments so I get some overlap between my probes. Now that I've constructed this set, the first thing I'm going to do is to put, uh, quantitate them with the count of the number of reads that go in them. The next few steps that I'm going to do are really just filtering out from my full set probes which have unusual characteristics which suggest that the data within them might not be reliable and the, which might introduce artefacts into the set of interactions that I later on generate. So one of the first things that I'm going to check is actually just the length of the probes that I've got. Some of these probes, particularly where they step over things like centromeres, will be hugely long and won't actually represent real Hindi 3 fragments. There's just gaps in the assembly. So one of the quickest ways to remove these is to look at the length of probes that I've got in here. And I can see if I zoom in a bit that most of my probes are somewhere around 300,000 bases in length and that really by the time you're up to sort of 600 or 700,000 bases you shouldn't be seeing any probes. The, the ones that are longer than that probably represent places where there are holes in the assembly. 
So the first filter I'm going to apply is a probe length filter and I'm going to remove any probes that are more than 600,000 bases in length. Okay, so that's removed some of these very large probes. The next set of probes that I want to get rid of are those which show unusually high or unusually low coverage in terms of the reads that are underneath them. Low coverage probably just means that again there's a gap in the assembly or it might be that there's very low complexity sequence so that the sequence has not been mapped reliably. Unusually high coverage normally indicates that some sequence which is not represented in the assembly has been mismapped into the region. Uh, so what I can do is look at the distribution of coverage on here. So if I take my data set and do a probe value histogram I can see that the coverage that I expect has a fairly sort of normal distribution on a log scale uh, but that there are outliers that fall above and below this. I can identify these automatically using the box whisker filter so if I go to filter by statistical test and box whisker I can take that to identify the outliers but because I want to remove the outliers, what I'm now going to do is to combine my lists to keep my previously good set and say I want those but not those which are outliers based on the coverage. And delete the original list. So here I have a set of probes now removing those that had an unusually long length and removing those which had unusually high or low coverage and you can see out of the original nearly 17,000 I've still got nearly 15,000 left so I've not removed a huge number here. The other thing that I want to look at before I go on to do my analysis is the sister trans ratio which exists in these probes. The sister trans ratio is generally fairly stable across the genome or should be um, so looking at any deviations from this can tell us interesting things about our data. I'm going to take my set of probes and then go back and re-quantitate these and I'm going to quantitate them by the trans to cis ratio. Now because the sister trans ratio that you expect to see it will uh, be biased by the length of the chromosome that your probe is on. If your probe is on a short chromosome you would expect naturally that it will have a higher proportion of trans reads uh, and if it's on a long chromosome it will have a higher proportion of cis reads. So what I'm going to do is not only quantitate the overall level but I'm going to subtract from that the median value for the chromosome that each probe is on. So what I'm looking at is the variability in the cis to trans ratio relative to what the chromosome as a whole is doing and that gives us a more informative answer. Shouldn't take too long to quantitate and we should be able to see some interesting things from it. Okay, so now this is quantitated, I can take a look at the start of one of these chromosomes and what you can see is that there is a level of systematic variation in the cis to trans ratio and this represents the chromatin domains which have been widely reported for high c data. So where you have a region of the genome which is interacting very tightly with itself, you see a lowering of the trans to cis ratio because there's more interactions within the same chromosome and then as you get to one of the more widely interacting domains then this ratio will go up. Some variation along here is perfectly normal and we don't want to exclude that but again we can look genome wide to see what the overall values that we're getting for these variations in cis to trans ratio are and the extreme outliers on this distribution again probably represent places where mismapping has occurred so that we have values that are likely to be unrealistic and probably artifactual. So again we can use the same process as we did before to use the box whisker filter to remove these outliers. As before these are the probes that we want to get rid of so if I want to have the ones that we're going to keep I'm going to use my combined lists option
to give me a set of probes that I can actually trust. And I now have a set of probes that I can take forward for my subsequent analysis and I can also see some interesting things about the patterns of enrichment and the patterns of interaction that I'm likely to see when I do that analysis.